Once, this flame burned higher and brighter. Now, it hardly burns at all. This is Petrosay's refinery outside Mossel Bay in the Southern Cape. In 2020, this gas-to-liquid plant shut down almost overnight. And insiders say if you had to crank it up now, it would probably explode. PetroSA is South Africa's national oil company. Its mandate is to ensure the country's energy security and benefit all its citizens. Its refinery was fed by an undersea pipeline that transported gas from deep sea wells 120 kilometers southwest of Mossel Bay. The gas was then converted at the refinery to unleaded petrol, diesel, liquid petroleum gas and other fuels. The refinery was the foundation of Petrosay's business. But then the gas ran out and not long afterwards, so did the money. A billion here, a billion there, and very soon we're talking about real money. Petrosay's past has been tainted by corruption and failed deals, and yet no one has been held accountable. By 2020, Petrosay executives had burned through 24 billion rand. The company was bankrupt. What it needed was a lifeline, and it would come ironically from ESCOM's failure. These diesel guzzling open cycle gas turbines keep the grid from collapsing when all else fails. But the diesel costs are crippling ESCOM, at times as high as 3 billion rand a month, and ESCOM's diesel budget for the year is almost depleted. The whole point of PetroSA was to manufacture petroleum products, but now they are just importers. Their target, to sell 3.5 billion liters of fuel, and ESCOM must just pay up. So PetroSA are effectively acting as a middleman. They're procuring diesel on the open market and then selling it to ESCOM at retail pricing. Kevin Milam is the DA Shadow Minister for Minerals and Energy. So without these massive diesel contracts, where does PetroSA stand? PetroSA is bankrupt. On the 31st of October, the oil tanker Nordlympia sailed from the UAE into Mossel Bay, its hold filled with fuel. Three other tankers were here already storing their liquid cargo until ESCOM needs it, because onshore storage is limited. But the costs are massive. According to a source, around 417,000 rand per day if tankers don't offload. And the Nord Olympia was in Mossel Bay for 22 days. ESCOM has argued they could save on diesel costs if they were allowed to bring it in themselves. PetroSA has refuted that it charges ESCOM more for diesel. ESCOM have been petitioning Minister Mantashe for years for a diesel wholesale license. If they could get that, it would mean they would be able to purchase diesel at a lower price. But Mineral and Energy Minister Gweta Mantashe's department has refused to give ESCOM that license. It says ESCOM did not meet the requirements. And the minister has also refused to say who benefits from the diesel contracts. PetroSA benefits, but there are also private suppliers who sell to PetroSA. The minister stood up and said that the diesel contracts are confidential. That's it? That's it. Oh well, and let's the, pack up and, and go And the home. portfolio committee accepted that. So who's making money out of these multi-million rand deals? And don't we have a right to know? Well, apparently not, because it's a closely guarded secret and the minister would like to keep it that way. Now, if you want to expose 
the business of Petro SA. You're basically killing it. At a media conference on the sidelines of the African Energy Week in October this year, Minister Mandashe was defending his decision to keep the contract secret. Could I just be clear then, Minister, are you saying that government's procurement rules and transparency rules around procurement do not apply to Petrose or should not? I'm not saying that. Uh, you, are, you are putting heads in my mouth. I'm saying Petrose is trading with fuel. And that is a highly contested space in the market. Now, nobody in that market will publish their suppliers and their consumers. Nobody. Now, you want Petrose to do that, and I'm saying it's a formula to close it down. That's it. Kwanongaba is a crowded township that looks out over Mossel Bay. And the tankers carrying their multi-million rand cargo that's boosting Petrose's profits. But the residents here see few benefits from the company. And the fight to change that over many years has exhausted Bongani Swartboy. We've been fighting a chasing our tail. And they make sure uh, that we do that. He says they want business opportunities and jobs, but those are given to outsiders. Petro SA took over the economy, but in that cake, none of us had a piece of it. The cake, instead, was being eaten by an elite group of executives and political cronies. Since at least 2010, Petro SA has embarked on several reckless multi-billion rand investments. Loans, for example, to a subsidiary in Egypt. But before long, that investment of 1.1 billion rand was written down to zero. Another 1.4 billion rand was written off in Equatorial Guinea. And a former CEO simply added another 20 million US dollars without board approval for a stake in a Ghana oil field. The High Court later ordered him to pay back 83 million rand, but he disappeared. Michael Marchant is head of investigations at Open Secrets. This NGO looks at economic crime and exposes the powerful and the corrupt. In November, they released a report that looks at who has the power in South Africa's energy sector. Over the last decade, Petro SA has been near to bankruptcy. The Auditor General has repeatedly flagged that it has concerns about it as a going concern. And one of the reasons for that is that Petro SA has repeatedly been involved in very strange dealings, particularly around the African continent. The Open Secrets report documents Petro SA's history as a vehicle for narrow political gain and corruption. If you look at Petro SA's history, there's this really disturbing trend where it has been used by political elites and over, in many instances by the governing party, the ANC, whereby big contracts would be awarded, but there would both be the party and related companies would receive kickbacks from those contracts. By 2014, Petro SA was facing an existential crisis. For a long time, they'd known that the gas fields that supplied the Mossel Bay refinery were running out of gas. No gas meant no Petro SA. So they hired a company to drill for more. It was called Project Equesi, but it was an operational disaster. It's the biggest financial loss of any state-owned entity uh, at the time. They never found the quantities of gas that they were looking for. And as a result, the project never delivered. They lost 14.6 billion rand on that project. That's one of the projects. Petro SA also said they'd build a refinery at Kucha in the Eastern Cape, creating 27,000 jobs. 200 million rand fee was paid out on consulting fees, but that project has gone nowhere. There's, there's no refinery being built. So would a new plan by Minister Mandasha be any different? 
He is determined to revive the creaking old Mossel Bay refinery at a massive cost through a partnership. So we took a position that we're going to revive uh, uh, Petro SA. In January, Petro SA put out a tender for a partnership to refurbish the refinery at around 3.7 billion rand. And we're hoping that before December we'll finalize the partnership with whoever agrees to work with it, then rebuild those refineries. And documents we have seen show that Petro SA has all but selected Gazprom Bank, a subsidiary of Gazprom, the gas company close to Russian President Vladimir Putin. But could that decision by Petro SA subject South Africa to a risk of sanctions? We're siding with countries that have very little economic value to South Africa. Russia is tiny in terms of our foreign trade, but we're going with that over countries that we do a lot more business with. I think it's, it's, it's an enormous concern. But remember, the refinery can't operate without gas. So will we import Russian gas or will the gas come from closer to home? Natural gas has been confirmed off our southern coast, but it's in deep, rough water. And it could take another four years before it might be delivered to the refinery. None of this makes sense, says activist Liz McDade. In 2017, she won a court battle to stop South Africa's nuclear deal with Russia. Now her organization is trying to protect our oceans from drilling. When we take a look at this Gazprom Africa deal, does it give you deja vu? Definitely. What is the actual deal? We don't know what Gazprom Africa is going to do. And um, we don't know who's going to pay for it and what the terms are. Whether the project actually happens or not, who knows? It's about getting the money flow. And as the diesel money flows, cannibalized from ESCOM to magically resurrect Petro SA, the minister is now executing his plan to rebirth it as the new South African National Petroleum Company. The energy minister will become its sole shareholder, which for now is conveniently himself. How do we stand up in the global politics of climate change and ask for trillions to get our just transition moving while at the same time saying we're forming an oil company and our energy minister is going to be the head of it. Uh, what signal is that sending? In the newly merged company, Petro says reckless past will be magically wiped clean. And if you want a petroleum right, you will need to give away 20% shareholding to the reborn Petro SA, with a further 10% going to a BEE partner. And this is really important. It would benefit the state directly through either Petro SA or the new National Petroleum Corporation. In other words, a secretive new state company will be the conduit for large amounts of future revenue. So whatever happens, Petro SA needs to survive for certain people. I, I think that that argument can be made. The minister says he's improved governance at Petro SA. But News24 recently reported that Chairman Nkululego Boya previously faced charges of spying on staff, bullying and victimization of whistleblowers, abuse of power, manipulation of tenders, and now he has fabricated a fake court order in an attempt to clear his name. Boya reportedly wants the CEO's job. Surely, in a country of 60 million people, we can find someone better qualified to take that job. The DA has called for his suspension, so our producer called him to give his version to carte blanche. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not interested. So even uh, though they said that you lied, spied and bullied your way to the top, you don't want to defend that? I'm quite happy for them to say what they want to say. And you wouldn't consider an interview with Carte Blanche about these matters? Not at all. More than once, we invited Petro SA to speak to us. They refused without reason. Look, no, we've just decided not to do an interview at this point. 
In response to our discussion points, Petro Say said, they have finalized a turnaround plan, are securing partners to restart the gas to liquids refinery, and have contributed to the reduction of load shedding and strengthened its management team. But it's a PR response. Meanwhile, politically connected people are lining up to be Petrosa's preferred suppliers. Perhaps what we are really seeing here is state capture 2.0 about to unfold. They hide behind that secrecy. It's one thing to do it with us. It's really remarkable and deeply disturbing that they do the same to Parliament. So basically, the South African public is in the dark. Absolutely. But not just the South African public. Parliament is in the dark. We don't get to see the inner workings of Petro SA. So we rely on whistleblowers. We rely on people inside Petro SA who give us information and, and tell us what's going on. And then we try and, and hold them accountable. At a recent community meeting in Kwanungaba, residents voiced their anger at Petro SA. They are still waiting for the company to throw them some crumbs while the tankers keep pumping away. One billion litres, two billion litres, three and a half billion litres. And any trust they had in Minister Mandasha was eroded long ago. Let's say for this interview, in my place right now was seated Minister Mandashi. What would you say to him? He's a self-centered person who doesn't care about this community. And it must go well. Simple as that. We might be hungry in our stomach, but we're not hungry here. We know. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.